introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with white and officially weighing 159 pounds. His professional record, 34 victories, including 25 knockouts with only two defeats and one bout even. From Silver Springs, Maryland, here is the three-time middleweight champion of the world, William Joppy! And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white with blue trunks. His official weight, 160 pounds. He brings a professional record to the ring consisting of 42 victories, including 31 knockouts, with only two defeats and one bout even. From the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed middleweight champion of the world, and are the executioner Hopkins. Earl Morton, the referee in this, will give the instructions to the fighters and we'll be underway in our main event. Hopkins at 38 years of age, the only question would be, does he get old in one day? And with that, we are set to go. Earl Morton having to tell him to touch gloves twice. I'm here, baby. First undisputed middleweight champion, as we said, since Marvelous Marvin Hagler, 1980 to 1987. And he's held the title for a long time. Served his time in jail, five years from 84 to 89, in the Greaterford Penitentiary for armed robbery. Goes back there, still talks to prisoners, works with kids all the time, tries to keep them off the streets. As we said, he's a guy who does a lot of good things. Does a lot of good things in the boxing ring, also. Yeah, with 16 tower defenses, you know he do a lot of good things in the boxing ring. But you pose a good question. Will he get old tonight? Th at 38 years old. Didn't feel he fought very well in his last fight against an outclassed opponent. And likewise, Joppy, very confident coming into this fight. Now, the common opponent for them, of course, was Felix Trinidad. And Hopkins shocked everybody by beating Trinidad. Joppy was stopped by Trinidad in the fifth round and knocked down twice. And now Hopkins is one of, the, one of the guys that can adapt to any style. When he fought Keith Holmes, he banged out with a 12-round decision. He'd come back the next fight, fight Felix Trinidad and box, outboxing and stopped him in the, in the later, later part of the fight. So he can adapt to anything. But William Joppy looked determined tonight. Both these guys in very good condition. Hopkins wants to crowd Joppy here. Joppy seems content right now to fight that fight. Joppy always in great shape. Conditioning really never a problem for either one of these guys. I'm sure if this goes 12 rounds, they'll both be there at, at the end of the fight. A leopard cut that slipped in by Hopkins. Now Hopkins like you trying to make it a rough fight. He's coming forward. on the gas very quickly here in this fight. He's a guy very often will work his way into a fight. I think Bernard Hopkins is better suited to stand outside, making William Joppy reach with punches. 
long left hand. Okay, stop. Throw the jockey walk it out. We gotta walk it out. Let's walk it out. Come on, man. I ain't playing Coming toward the end of the first round, an effective first round, I think, for Bernard Hopkins. He just outworked Joppy a little bit. We'll go into the corner of Bernard Hopkins. All right, all right. You need a little more dabbing in there. It's going to be cool. You need a little more dabbing. Give me a little more. Give me the water, please. A little water. We need a little more dabbing in there. Okay? All right. We know what's in the computer already, so we have to look for it. It's there. Okay? All right. They have been a team for a long time, Boy Fisher and Bernard Hopkins. Dad, we're not looking for big shots. All right? Well, you're trying to overhand it right, Najee. Trying to put overhand right, I got it. Okay. okay. Paint good. All right. All right, second up. Hopkins hooked up with Boy Fisher after he lost his first fight to a guy by the name of Clinton Mitchell. Proceeded to win 22 straight after that. It's been a pretty good ride ever since. Round two. This fight is a little bit late in coming. Could have happened a couple of years ago, but for the fact that Joppy lost a fight and thus Never had the chance to fight Bernard Hopkins. But actually, John Thay, when you talk to him, feels that he's more ready to fight Bernard Hopkins now than he was then. Yeah, I think he's done a lot more. He's had two best middleweights in the world. It's time to get on a, on a big car like, it is, like tonight. That should be William Jackie's fight right there on the inside because it seemed like he can't get anything going on the outside because of the height and reach of Bernard Hopkins. So he, he take it inside, work the body and try to break him down. Right now he's getting beaten on the inside too though. Nothing really damaging but Hopkins just a little busier. Now, Joppy does have some pop. He's got 25 knockouts and his 34 wins. He can get you out of it. That said, Hopkins not an easy guy to get out of it. Yeah, but our Hopkins trying to rough him up. He's taking the fight on the inside. I thought he would stay outside, but like I said, he could fight both ways. So take him right on the inside and rough him up. Both these guys really experienced professionals. As you can see, they each get a lot of angles. Two pros. Very effective three punch combination of one of from Hopkins. Ending with a left to the body. And William Joppy had to stand the jab if he's on the outside, jabbing his way in, trying to set the, the right hand in the combinations. Then get out and reset again. Because Bernard Hopkins is waiting, waiting on him to come inside and waiting on him to do certain things. So. These two, of course, uh, not only opponents in the ring, but uh, they got a little, uh, maybe it's a gentleman's agreement, maybe it's not. They made a bet. Here's how it went. Listen to this. If I just go to distance, um, he, give me, he gives me 50000 If he stops me, I, I give him 25000 That's how the bet goes. But, but, but which, which I want to shake hands on in the next press conference. I want to shake with him just to make it official because we never shook because he got... A lot of chaos came came about at the last press conference. But what I want to do is, if I stop him, give me a hundred thousand. That's what I'm asking. Did you want to swing? You want to switch up? Since he want to throw the bet, so he want to bring bets into it. If I stop him in the course of the fight, can I get a hundred thousand? 
Take the first bet like he took and deal with that. I don't want him to, to, to try to get out of anything. I've made what's happening. We're not going to go back and forth about, you know, well, I'm going to bet you this and I bet you this and I bet you that. It's already set. He's already agreed with it. It's old press news. But we didn't shake hands. The bet's off. <laughs> and we all know it's for amusement only, right? It seems that way. But you never know. You don't think about bets when you're in the ring anyway. You don't think about winning. Bernard Hopkins made a big bet on himself, a legal bet uh, in his fight with Trinidad, and uh, won a whole lot of money. A lot of money involved in this fight, of course, and uh, big things down the road for the winner. Now what happens is he's got a good part of the middleweight division. Still some attractive fights. Shane Mosley, of course, is out there. Oscar De La Hoya right now still the middleweight. Ricky Wright wants a piece of somebody. And Fernando Vargas. From 147 to 160, it's a lot of makeable fights, um, a lot of big money fights, and these guys, these guys both know there's some big money out there to be made in, in these big fights. And of course, De La Hoya is the cash cow. Everybody wants a piece of De La Hoya. As much as in the heavyweight division, everybody wants a piece of Tyson, even though he doesn't have a title. There's the guys to go to. Bernard Hopkins uh, has made it very public. He would like Oscar De La Hoya. I can see that fight being made. And then after that, he says he'd like Roy Jones again. We had him one time. Starting to bust Joppy up a little bit here. BMW has, has to let his hands go a lot more and not pull out. Because when he pull out, he's getting hit. Hopkins doing a nice job inside. That one's straight a little low. And Joppy answered it. So Hopkins will get some time, but Hopkins threw the first low blow, and sure Joppy replied. Morton gives Joppy a warning, but Hopkins threw the first one. Joppy wants to fight right in about where he is now. It's starting to open up a little bit more here. Joppy working with Jab a little bit more consistently in this round. But still, but I was keeping the distance, trying to throw combination. A little better round, I thought, for William Jock. Now you got it. Now you've got two on here. That's where you go. Go. Very good. Suck it in. He's doing beautiful. Now the jab is landing. Real small win. Put the bucket down. Put the bucket down. We'll make a reach for it. Suck it in. Get that grease on him. Looking good, job. That's what it is. And now try to spin that right hand all the right uppercut. Because he's going down. And you're doing right. Every time. Bend down. That stops everything. Give me some more grease, please. I want some more. Yeah. Watch his eyes, yeah. There you go, Tim. Just like that. Watch him. He's a slack guy. Watch him now. He hit the yeah. He know what he's doing. He know what he's doing. You got to keep that. Make him look bad. Make him look bad. Touch him. Touch him and move. Touch him. Don't go straight back. No, I'm not. Pretty good advice, I thought, in the corner. Uh, and again, one voice, one or two pieces of information. And uh, fighter can digest that. Now let's see if he can go out and execute it. Use the jab. Try to bring the uppercut behind the jab. Jab is good weapon for him, I thought, before the Jab is a man on a mission in this fight. He has uh, dedicated this fight uh, to a daughter, a baby six weeks old, who died tragically after being dropped 
my head by they believe the babysitters. They're kind of a mystery and uh, of course it set him way back for a long time and uh, after the funeral they seem to come around a little bit but he has dedicated uh, this fight to her. And right now Bernard Hopkins uh, is getting right on him. Yeah, he's putting the pressure on. He's smothering that uh, William Joppy's jabs and, and combination punching, so he's staying on the inside and trying to rough him up. To be a six foot middleweight, he's a rough guy on the inside. Well, as you said earlier, he, he could fight a lot of different ways and be very effective. And again, a lot like Morgan Hagen. He really does. Now he's sitting back in boxing. So he, he's, he's changing directions now. He, now just a just a, a, a complete fighter when it comes to to styles. Still got good hands, still doesn't get hit very much. He only 38 years old now. He's like one of the young fighters. Yeah, he really is. Jaffe can't pull out with his hands down. Hopkins just gets Jaffe a little frustrated at times because he gives him so many different looks. Now Hopkins back fighting on the inside. And he'll take it back outside. He's just a, he's a smart fighter. Not a bad round, just an effective round for Hopkins. Not spectacular, but but effective. Okay, you got to put a little pop on that jab for me, baby. Put a little pop on that jab. That's why I need to pop on the jab. Great right hand by by Bernard Hopkins. Caught William Joppin staring, kind of pulling out also. Yeah, keep them hands up. He's a shorter guy. He can't, he can't pull out. Sharp punch. Stop him. Stop him. Up. Round number five. This is round five. Hopkins in the white trunks and Joppy in black trunks. See on the back of uh, Joppy's trunks the name Vashti that is his daughter about whom we spoke and to whom he has dedicated this fight. Now Hopkins starting to find the range now. He landed a good right hand a moment ago. Hopkins, as he's always done, keeps that left hand to the side, but it's always out of harm's way. Hopkins with 16 successful defenses. This is his 17th. Pretty select company. Carlos Monzon, whose record he broke, had 14 successful. Marvin Hagel, over his seven-year reign as champion, had 12 successful defenses, and uh, Hopkins has overshadowed them both. 
He just cleaned the division out. And he's fought everybody. He hasn't dodged anybody. No, he's a true fighter. He fight everybody. And, you know, the same, again, we go back and talk about Hagler. Same thing with Hagler. It's just that the division was not as strong as Marvin Hagler was fighting. But he fought everybody. Good right hand again by Hopkins. Just not allowing Joppy to be first. Joppy needs to go forward and just make it a fight. He got to change styles if he want to win this fight. He just start just trying to dog him. He's a shorter guy. He looks to be pretty strong also, so he needs to go forward and, and make the fight. Hopkins gets inside. A couple of shots and then gets outside. Now Hopkins is just too smart for you to sit back and wait on him. I could give only the third round to Joppy, so I have a 39-37 right now for Hopkins. That's the same way. Uh, third round for Joppy. Three rounds of one. Yeah, the only you hear from the fans is for a fight going on in the crowd right now. And uh, that's drawing more attention than the fight that's in the ring. But we're going to stay right where we are as time ticks down here in round five. And again, Joppy just... Not able to out quick Hopkins. Hopkins not dominating the fight by any stretch of the imagination, but in my opinion, he's winning most of the rounds. Yeah, he's edging him every round. <laughs> Gonna go into the corner now of William Joppy. He know he's in a fight. Give him up here. Give him up here. Yeah. Oh, my wild. Looking good. Now, man, stay careful, though, champ. I want you to stay careful because he's dirty. He's dirty. And but two men in the back of the house, thank you. Now, what would you like to do with him? If he's two men hitting behind the back of the house, what would you like to do with him? Open up one more time. He do his back west from the side. He's bouncing. Oh, stay off him. Give him some more beach for him, yeah. He's stumbling. Now, try to get that right hand. That's the one to get through. Yeah. Huh? Everything he needs right there in the computer, son. All right, stiff jack. Hey, my mom. All right, stiff jack. Uh, and you can really tell those guys have been together for a long time. There's very little spoken, and yet they're on the same page. Yeah, that's very important. They know each other well. And Bernard is the, is a true professional. He know what he has to do in the ring. He know what Joppy's doing, so he know how to kind of react everything in the ring. They have great respect for one another. Excellent relationship. Hopkins has gone through promoters like Shoes and has been with Gary Fisher since virtually since day one. And Jeffy really figured out how difficult it is to fight to fight Banana Hopkins. He tried to fight him on the outside. And now look at Bernard's on the inside. He's just a difficult guy to fight. He's very strong also. Yeah, he's just not letting Joppy into this fight. Good shot to the body by Hopkins. Hopkins very unemotional in the ring. Rarely changes facial expression. Gary Fisher said, and it's all in the computer, and uh, been a lot of input into that computer. It's like uh, William Joppy is slowly letting the fight slip away from him, round after round. Yeah, he's, he's not being dominated by the stretch of the imagination, but that's not necessarily what it's all about. you got to do something to win each round, and uh, Hopkins is finishing second. Not be the one be in a position where he can knock out the win, especially this Banana Hopkins. He has a great chin. Hopkins 
just kind of laying in on him and, and doing a better job inside than Jop. And doing a better job outside than Jop. Just by a little bit. In, in each area, he's beaten. Now he's back outside boxing. Five seconds remaining, round six. And for Bernard Hopkins, just kind of more of same. Bernard Hopkins, uh, as we said, the guy's a consummate pro, and when he gets you up against the ropes, he keeps you there. He keeps you there and work you and give you different angles when you got you on the ropes. I mean, to be a six-foot middleweight and, and putting the, the shorter man on the ropes is, is pretty impressive. Just doing a good job all the way around, Bernard Hopkins, and doing enough to win most of the rounds and uh, is really kind of driving the bus right now. Unprecedented night here. Yo, ref, let's watch the low blows in this, What? It's funny. Right, man. Come on, son. Come Just on. to finish Come that on. thought, Come unprecedented on. night of five championship fights here in Atlantic City. And this, the last, the main event. And we have one big surprise in Corey Spinks defeating Ricardo Mayorga, who was starting to look pretty invincible after two impressive wins over the women force. First airborne in Mosul, Iraq, are uh, holding off breakfast for another 15, 20 minutes. They've been with us since about 4 o'clock this morning. Back to the inside fighting. I'm really impressed with Bernard Hopkins to be 38 years old and, and to still bully around the, the young guys of the division. He's fighting a great fight right now. Yeah, he really is. Now he's got Joppy going backward, back into the ropes again. And just pinning him on the ropes. Now Joppy finally works his way off. Joppy has really not been able to do much, especially in the power punch area. He's got a few jabs in, but not enough so far. A right hand and a left behind it. Throw Joppy off of him. A left hand by Joppy. Then Joppy got to let the hands go a little bit more. Get a little bit closer, let the hands go, and try to win some of these rounds. You're allowing uh, Bernard Hopkins just to dictate everything that's going in the fight from the inside and the outside. This is the seventh round of a 12-round fight for the undisputed middleweight championship. Larry Tompkins, IBF heavyweight champion Chris Bird alongside. This is like a sparring session. He's sitting right here and uh, going out of the middle of the ring, feeling real comfortable doing it. But Bernard Hopkins is getting the better of it. Yeah, he is. Just out quicking him. Out punching him. Neither man has been hurt in the fight, but Hopkins is just doing more. And with it, winning rounds. With the counter, the jab that time. He's just doing a little bit more business. Getting the better of him every time. I hope he's not going to shoot. Get to the juice now, baby. Get to the juice. Round number eight upcoming. 
and it has been uh, pretty much a whitewash for Bernard Hopkins. I gave the third round to Joppy. Other than that, it's you know, Joppy's corner. Joppy, I would, I would now say in my mind, I'm, I'm down a few rounds. I got to go forward and, and just not get roughed up. Just got to let the hands go. So I think he's worried about getting hit on the inside a lot. He's keeping his hands up, but he's not letting them go. Don't pull out. Go forward and make the fight. I mean, it's a, it's a tough fight for William Joppy right now because for now, Hopkins is showing him so many angles. You know, it's kind of frustrating when a guy can beat you on the inside and take you outside and beat you. So, uh, you got to take chances. And we have Jockey definitely have to take chances right now. I'm sure very frustrating. That well put. He can't beat his man at either game. Here. Hopkins seems to want to fight inside here. When he does, he's effective. Yeah, he seems really comfortable inside. Like, Jockey can't hurt him. seem to want to let his hands fly and, and you can understand why he's gonna get hit if he does but somewhere along the line and Bernard Hawkins is smart he's smothering a lot of a, a lot a lot of uh, punches from Joppy on the inside don't let him get off but uh, you still gotta take chances and you fight the best middleweight in the world and if you want to be the best middleweight you gotta you gotta have a, a dominating performance It's just one hand free and continues to pepper Joppy. And again, Hopkins just not quicking Joppy. It's just that simple. Good left hand right there. Now Joppy pops out of there. Not about Hopkins got in the ropes. But now he's so clever on the inside. He's showing you different looks, different angles that uh, most boxers just don't pick up. And he's hitting you at the same time he's showing you this angle. So he's just a smart fighter. There's a little clash of heads there, too. Clash of heads, but no cut. And staying busy inside. Not what you put in the category of an exciting fight, but kind of a clinic being put on by Bernard Hopkins. Starting to get there with even more consistency as the fight goes on. Look at this. Get, kick his legs off. Kick his legs off. Keep your hands high this time, Joby. And when you're inside, start throwing right hooks at your inside. Something different. You threw a left hook in corner. Yeah. You only throw, you gotta throw through all the punches. You're not throwing left punches. Throw the right hand now. Stick to the one, two. No chance, man. This fight being fought on the inside. Really good inside fighting, especially by Bernard Hopkins. I mean, he's dominating in there, laying, laying the head on the, on the shoulder, picking his shots. Still more inside work by Bernard Hopkins. Five seconds out. Now remember, we talked earlier about the bet that they made, and uh, should Joppy go the 12 rounds, Hopkins would have to cough up 50K. Like it's gonna go 12 rounds. It does look that way right now, but Hopkins is a guy, pretty good finisher. If he gets you hurt, he can get you out of there. And I thought he was starting to get to Jockey a little bit more in that last round. Well, 
jab, let's go the right hand behind the jab. Hopkins is shoot, once he gets past eight rounds, he's only lost once and has five knockouts. So he, he can still bring a lot, even uh, at the end of the dance. That one loss, of course, was to Roy Jones. A fight which he really would like to event. Look at our Hopkins on the inside again. Good work on the inside. Left hand back Joppy right off him. Joppy did get in there with a punch of his own. There's an uppercut inside. Joppy got his hands going inside. And fight is really slipping away from him now. Joppy maybe starting to get a little bit frustrated. Just nothing is working for him. It's not for want of trying. He's not dogging it out there. He's just getting out quick, outworked, not punched. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, when, when nothing is working against a great champion like Bernard Hopkins, there's really nothing you can do. Slip the left hand into Joppy. in Martin Hagler mode. And on the inside, just roughing him up. Yeah, throwing punches. Might be having fun also. Just it's really all business today. That's on the back, Joppy and the and hit him with a pretty good right hand. He may be starting to weird Joppy out. Uppercut from Hopkins. That's been there for him. He's still, there's another one. And a right hand and another one. And that back Joppy up. Joppy trying to swing back. That was even a better round for Hopkins, and even a more dominant round for Hopkins. Yeah, than yeah it was. It, but, uh, he picked his shots real well on the inside. Pick it up a little bit. Pick it up a little bit, son. Uppercut started to be effective for Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins pick his shot so well on the inside. Setting him up, uppercuts. Well, so far tonight on this unprecedented card, Travis Sims with an impressive five-round knockout over Alejandro Garcia. Zab Judah, of course, getting rid of Jaime Rangel in just a minute and 13 seconds. Hardly had a chance to hang our coats up. John Ruiz with an ugly 12-round win over Hasim Rahman to win the interim heavyweight title for the WBA. And Corey Spinks, most impressive with the unanimous decision, or rather majority decision win over Ricardo Mayorga, who is a, an overwhelming favorite coming into this fight. That's really the story of the night so far. Bernard Hopkins fighting like the champion he is right here. I have him comfortably in front of my card over William Jopp. was even a little bit more done in the last round. Discussion going on here with Earl Morton. To both fighters. So he stopped the left stop. Right hand at the top of the head. Good shot from Hopkins. You can see most of Joppy's punches are being caught on the arms. A lot of Joppy, Joppy punches being caught on. William Joppy is not getting beat. Uh, really bad. He's not getting dominated, but Bernard Hopkins is beating him in every facet of the, of the sport. So right now he's he's just getting uh, you know slowly beaten every single round. Chopping right hand. I think he's getting a little bit more dominant in the last two rounds. Hopkins may be starting to think I might be able to get him out of here. This is round 10, we're going 12. If Joppy does go 12, if in fact that bet that 
You heard both fighters talk about is the real deal, and uh, Hopkins is going to have to cough up $50,000 to Joppy for going the distance. That was a good left hand, and it buckled the knees of Joppy. Yeah, it hurt Joppy a little bit. Nice hit. And a straight right, right on the button. He's starting to slow Joppy down. Yeah, he's starting to wear him out. Pinpointing his shots. Ian Joppy is, is a tough guy. He'll hang in there, but tonight, uh, Bernard Hopkins showing why he has 16 tile defenses, the best middleweight, undisputed. It's a great fighter. Yeah, a classic Joppy. And Joppy is a very good middleweight, as you said. Right on the right side above the eye of William Joppa. In a very unusual place. Good short right hand from Hopkins. Coming to the end of round number 10. And a dominant round, I thought, for Hopkins. In fact, the last two have been dominant. And for these guys, it is only morning, 101st Airborne in Mosul, Iraq. And uh, they're really enjoying what they're seeing, and we, of course, here in the States, enjoying seeing them, too. It's good to see them having a good time and uh, enjoying an outstanding evening of boxing here in Atlantic City, an unprecedented evening of boxing. Watch the right from Hopkins. He sets it up nice. It's a lead right hand. And we... William Joppy at distance. Leave right hand. I mean, it's, it's almost... It's almost target practice now. Yeah, it really is. And just absolutely starting to dominate. You can see that welt up on the right side. Actually, you can't see it from this angle, but trust me, it's there. Starting to bust Joppy up a little bit. A lot of puffiness on Joppy's face. And a quick right hand right out of the box. For Hopkins to start the 11th round. I think Bernard Hopkins looking for a stoppage now. I do too, and that, that wealth is not getting any better. A lot of puffiness on the whole right side of Joppy's face. The cheek above the eye. I think there's a possibility Earl Morton may not let this go too far, seeing as Hopkins has dominated the fight. And I don't think he wants Joppy to get hurt. Yeah, he's getting roughed up pretty bad up here on the road. Bernard Hopkins is in such great shape. I mean, he's been throwing for 10 rounds straight on the inside and outside. And at 38 years old, I mean, I, I want to be like him at 38. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's been very sharp, very high connect percentage, too, I think. And he's given you the whole package. Showing an effective jab, which he's had throughout his career. A good sharp right hand. Not necessarily a right hand's going to get you out with one punch, but an effective right hand, sharp uppercut. Straight right hand that you threw in the last round. He's got the whole pack. Yeah, he, do have, he does have the whole pack. And he wasn't even breathing in the corner in between rounds. And he come running out, starting the 11th round like it was the first round. I don't think he wants to give away that 50K. Again, a double left hand from Hopkins. Hopkins really starting to bust up Joppy now. Swelling in the face of Joppy. No, no, come on, come on, come on. Inside a minute remaining round 11, a fight that has been absolutely dominated by Bernard Hopkins. And he's still working. Still working on the inside. You right? get more impressed with Bernard Hopkins as each round goes on. That'd be a very tough guy to prepare for, I would have to think, because you don't know which Bernard Hopkins you're going to fight that night. You don't. He can fight you on the inside, he can take you outside. 
it's just, it, like you said, it's really hard to prepare for him. The box, the ball. And he's six foot tall. That's right. Six foot middleweight. Well, he's a real pro, and he really should be respected as the champion that he is. And again, you know, I, I wish more people could see the side of him that, uh, that we get to see quite a lot. And, uh, True enough, he, you know, he doesn't have a shut-off valve sometimes when he starts talking, but he's a very bright guy. He's done some terrific things in the Philadelphia community. He's gone back to his roots and tried to work with kids. Goes back to the jail that he was. Jumpy, really starting to get busted up. Come on, lift it up, baby. It ain't over yet. Come on, we got to bang this guy. Huh? How come you're not dropping his right hands or left hooks? You got to throw those. Believe me, Jumpy, those. I don't know. Oh, damn. The last round. Lord have mercy. Suck it in, Jumpy. Keep your legs wide. Give it to a full one, two, and one, two, three. Last round. Cool. Please. Hold on, baby. Fast shot. Seconds out. So we come to the final round, and now you got to start thinking about what's next. And uh, as we said, Roy Jones uh, wants a piece of Oscar De La Hoya, and I think uh, that would be a big money fight and would be a big attraction, big pay-per-view attraction. So you got to think that De La Hoya might want a little bit of him too. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it'd be a great fight. You got two tall boxes there, standing around the same height. Oscar De La Hoya with the, the hand speed and the movement. He's going to have to use it against a guy like Bernard Hopkins because he, he brings a complete package in the ring. I can't believe how strong he is. He can fight you on the inside, beat you up. He'll take you outside and beat you up. So he's, he's a great fighter. And Hopkins, or rather, uh, De La Hoya has struggled sometimes with guys who will change up on him like Hopkins did. I thought that was how Mosley beat him the first time, just by changing up during the course of the fight. And this is just starting to be a mercy killing here. Okay, I'll you right here. Now is trying to end it. And he sensed he sensed the knockout coming and I think he really won it. Good left hand again, a sharp left hand. And again, Earl Morton looking in very closely. Hopkins really starting to dominate now. And right now it's a mall. And Hopkins right back on top of Joppy, trying to get this thing over, trying to stop it. Joppy trying to hold on and survive here. The outcome not in doubt at all. Another big shot. The only question is, can Joppy survive and cash in on his bet? Joppy really a beaten fighter right now. Again, he takes a right hand. He's got 50 seconds to survive. Good right hand again from Hopkins. Hopkins really trying to get him out of here. Opens him up again. Three shots to the body, comes upstairs to the head, and a left to the head, and it drives Jaffe over the ropes. Trying to close the show. Come on, come on walk it up. Jaffe now has 28, 27 seconds to survive. I stop, I got you. Let me handle. Come on, walk it out. Steps back, takes a deep breath, the look of a beaten fighter. Hawkins again, right on the attack. Eight seconds. Can't be saved by the bell, remember. Five seconds to go in the fight. Great, great, great. Yeah. He ended up and hung on. Well, he did, and he may get uh, $50,000 out of the payday of Bernard Hopkins, but uh, that's not going to be uh, much of a reward for the beating that he took. Absolutely no contest. Bernard Hopkins dominating the fight. I give Joppy one round. I give him one round also. How Bernard Hopkins looked, he can fight till he's 50. 
He really does. I mean, it was an absolute clinic that he put on here tonight. He really did try to, to keep that other 50,000 also. He tried to get him out of here in the 12th round. You can see him right on top of Joppy. And Joppy at this point, very much the beaten fighter. You can see the swelling on both sides of his face. Hopkins just right on top of him. No boxer want to go out on his back or get stout, especially in the 12th round. You fought this long, you might as well go and, and finish the course. And uh, Joppy hung on. He fought time. bravely, but just Denied the Hopkins is just, just too much. Yeah, really, I think that's that's exactly right. It's just too much Bernard Hopkins. Figured out a way that he was going to beat him. The way he was going to beat him was to get right on his shoulder, and he managed to do that pretty darn well. So it's in the hands of the judges, but this one I feel very confident in saying there's no doubt about it. No doubt. Will Duffy is a good fighter. I mean, he dominated a really good fighter now. And Joppy, you have an idea. I mean, this is not a guy like we spoke of in, with the Rockman Rui situation. This is not a guy that shot. This is a guy that still has something left and probably could beat most of the middleweights out there, but uh, ran into a buzzsaw tonight and a guy who was just was too much and, and too good. Yeah, William Debbie has a lot left. You know, Bernard Hopkins, hey, he would, look what he did to Trinidad. You know, outboxed him and then knocked him out late. So I think uh, Joppy will be back, but... You know, just don't run into Bernard Hopkins again. Yeah, Bernard Hopkins at 38 years of age. Uh, I know he's not getting any younger, but boy, he sure doesn't look like, look like he's getting any older either. Yeah, I picked up a lot of things from Bernard Hopkins tonight myself. <laughs> Very impressive. Yeah, really was. What are the things you learned from him? Fighting on the inside, being in great shape, using angles on the ropes. I mean, he's just, just a smart fighter. I mean, on the outside, he can just box you. But also go inside, pick your shots, and using angles on the inside. It's incredible. He's, he's fun to watch. Been around for a long time, and, and again, uh, speaking of guys who don't get their just due, he really didn't get his until he entered the winner-take-all middleweight series uh, of Don King's back in 2001. He uh, scored a unanimous decision win over Keith Holmes, and that got him into a fight with Felix Trinidad, and uh, he handled Felix Trinidad. All of a sudden, people started to take notice of what much of the boxing uh, Many of the boxing people knew for, for years that this guy was, was legitimate, and uh, sometimes... He, you know, he shoots his mouth a little bit and he gets himself in trouble, but the guy's the real deal. Yeah, he backs it up. Yeah, there's one guy that can talk and back it up. And, and again, I, I really emphasize saying that uh, he's not nearly the guy that he's portrayed to be because he does shoot his mouth. Let's make it official. Here's Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Malvina Lathan scores at 119 to 109. John Stewart has it 118 to 109. And Stephen Weisfeld scores at 119 to 108. All for the winner by unanimous decision. And still the undisputed middleweight champion of the world, Bernard the Executioner Hopkins. Well, Bernard Hopkins, I just think, uh, as simply as I could say, I put on a clinic tonight, Chris. Yeah, he did. It was, it was like sparring. It was like taking a young boy to school. And, and that's how it looked in the ring. Take nothing away from uh, William Joppy. He hung in there. He went to 12 rounds. He tried his best, but Bernard Hopkins was just too much. Just wore him down like chopping down a tree and uh, busted him up uh, toward the end of the fight. I thought, uh, especially, and from round nine on, it was an absolutely dominant Bernard Hopkins. Uh, and he almost got him out of there, tried to get him out of there. But uh, I'm sure when Chris Bird looks in the mirror, or Chris Bird, when William Joppy looks in the mirror tomorrow morning, you look in the mirror, you look as good as you do tonight. But... When William Joppy uh, looks in the mirror, he's going to know he's been in a battle with one of the best. Let's go to Wally Matthews. Wally? I'm following Bernard over here, buddy. Bernard, we need you over here. All right, Bernard. You didn't win your bet, but you won the fight. It looked like you were trying very hard to finish the fight with a knockout in the 12th round. What did Joppy say to you between 11 and 12? Um, he said, from the hood, man, from the hood. And you know what? All due to respects, man, he's from the hood. Joppy's from the hood, man. And, um, you know, we talked that, that talk, man. We walked that walk. We was the best fighter tonight, Matthews. I mean, I, I think we were. I mean, I don't know, you know, your opinion. Um, you know, one thing, I respect you. I might not agree with you, but I respect you when you was with the newspaper. And I respect you now. And um, I think that we, like, gave the people their money's worth. I mean, it was a couple little clinches and stuff. But Joppy's a true boy. He got my respect, man. And you, and you know what, Matthews? 
that 50 was well earned by Joppy. And, and, and Don, right here, Don's going to pay him that. And I'm a man of my word. Just like with Trinidad, you know, I won. This guy won, but he deserved he deserved that, man. And and he stood up. He didn't quit. He could have quit. And you know he could have quit. And he took some punishment. He gave some back. He took a tremendous amount of punishment. So now what, what's going to happen next with you? I mean, you know, after I you beat Trinidad, you had the world at your feet. Things are back now. Things are back now. I went through a little uh, mental, mental crisis. And, uh... You know what I mean? It, not all on my fault. You know, I'm well, I'm well enough to stand up and be a man to say certain things that I might have done different, but there's a lot of things that I wouldn't have done different. That stand up for my principles, what I believe in, Matthews, love me, hate me. I mean, you've been criticized by your, your, your standards and things that you figured that was right, and you you know, you took the blows and you took the good with it. But let's talk about 2004. Two, 2004 is something I'm looking forward to. Um, I'm going to talk to my handlers, my lawyers, and sit back and talk as of January 24th. I'm officially a uh, 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 free agent. Um, Greg Sir for the Pennsylvania State Athletic Board had just told me that my license is down there waiting in, in, in Philadelphia uh, uh, State Building. And an EX promotion is what I want to uh, start off. Uh, maybe Don can co-promote with me, Aaron or whoever want to get down with Bernard Hopkins. Now, this statement here shows that Delahoya, Sugar Shane Mosley, and I'm going to need you, the media, the non-biased media, to put the pressure on the middleweights, because that's what they really are. I'm talking about the guys that's five pounds under me. Let's let them fight, Matthews. I'm not, you can see, well, I'm not a big puncher. I'm not a heavyweight. I, I, I'm not a cruiserweight. I'm not a heavyweight. I'm a middleweight. I'm a throwback. Like, the throwback jerseys are so popular. Yeah. I'm that, Matthews. But are you going to, are you going to make the the 20 middleweight defenses yes, for your goal, so you're going to force these guys to fight you at 160? Uh, yes, I mean, but look, I've already said it, Matthews, and you're a guy to, you know, to read and, and, and do your research. I'm willing to cut off two pounds and come down at 57, maybe 56. If it's Delahoya, I'll cut off my right leg to come down at 56 for my title. <laughs> but we, I need I need people to stop protecting him. And, and I mean, I'm not coming down on y'all. Just, y'all want to see the best fight for the fans. I mean, I love Delahoya's face, but yet, you know, you know, he got the looks, I got the other looks. It's a big money fight. And, and everybody wants to see it. I don't want, you know, it, you know my ogre didn't come through tonight. I don't want my ogre now. And that's, you know, my ogre is a gutty fighter. What about but, Spinks? But, but Corey Spinks, the jinx, you know, I would love to have an opportunity, but he's not a middleweight. Me and him, you know, we talk, he's not a middleweight. He, you know, he wants Shane now. Look, let's get to Oscar. That's the big money fight. If Roy Jones want to come out at 170 after he looked with Tarver, I'd be, I'd be willing and love to take that. But 190, 195, and 200, Matthews, look at this body. I got a 20, I got, I got a 26 inch waist. A one 39 and a years old, 26 30, inch waist. That's pretty good. No, you did not. Hey, congratulations. I didn't get time. I didn't get time. You heard it, Roy. Uh, uh, <laughs> Bernard Hopkins closed the show, but he's open for business with anybody in the middleweight division. Anybody Congratulations anybody? tonight. Let's go back to ringside and Barry Tompkins. All right, thanks, Wally. Especially uh, if his name is Oscar De La Hoya, he's available. I have to tell you, I, that's, I'd love to see that fight. Yeah, it'd be a great fight.